So we all know the picture, Nostradamus. I think he got it all wrong. Even his prescience could not have uh, predicted the technological advancement that we are in today, from the horse carriage to the electric car and now to the flying man, and of course from the Morse code to high-speed SATCOM on every ship and introducing telemedicine. We all know this point. This is point Nemo. And I've always wondered that is it in this time and age, don't you think that ships out there should have uh, healthcare and diagnostic like uh, similar to what we have on land? So this led to this slide of shore-like care at sea. My name is Nanda Kumar and I'm the CEO founder of uh, eVitals Information Management System. In short, I'm going to talk about Uberization of maritime health. So what is the problem we have at sea? We have, uh, these are the problem statement, statements that we got. Longer voyages, short stays, lost time due to slowing because of uh, uh, ill health of uh, crew, longer port stays, lack of telehealth on board the ship that leads to higher art attrition rate for the uh, you know, quality crew. And Maritime Labor Convention does mandate that you should have uh, shore-like care on uh, board a ship. Solutions are available, but they are very expensive. So the scale of the problem, uh, since most of you are mariners, so you will probably know that we have about 1.5 million seafarers, 60,000 vessels, and we have about 15 uh, TMAS, which is telemedical uh, maritime assistance services around the world. Uh, last year's statistics was 20,000 assisted, out of which 2,000 medivacs, that's about 10%. And most ships have only a basic first aid kit. Hardly anybody have, uh, you know, approved uh, vital signs monitors. Uh, no crew wellness monitoring program and mostly everybody is reporting verbally to the TMAS agencies. So who is responsible for seafarer health? To start with, the seafarer, of course, then the company, then the ship, then the TMAS agencies are mandate, mandated by uh, MLC and IMO to provide uh, seafarer uh, welfare or uh, health care. The flag state does have a little bit of responsibility. And of course, the MLC, who is uh, coming out with all kinds of new rules. So the crew wellness ecosystem looks something like that. And there are regulations to comply. We have a lot of regulations. There's no shortage of regulations. There's IMHA, STCW, and ILO, which all mandate shore like care should be given to people on board ships. MLC has got a set of rules. Uh, I think people can look up MLC for the regulations on this. But in short, you need to have shore-like facilities on board ships. So talking to seafarers, what do they want? They say in this age and time, in this digital age, do we have to flip through the shipmaster's uh, medical aid book that we have on the uh, ship to check if, uh, what, what we have to do for uh, different type of uh, illness? Sailing masters feel that they will be able to take confident decisions if they had some kind of a medical diagnostic tool. Crew are more comfortable if they know that they are having some kind of shore-like facility and then if they are not well, they can always talk to their doctor or the company doctor face to face. And the captain feels far more confident that if he had a telemedic kit on board, he can take informed decisions based on uh, TMAS advisories, whether to divert a ship or to ask for a medivac. It's inevitable. While at sea, we all know accidents do happen. People do fall sick. You cannot stop that. But are you prepared? This is not my marketing statement. This is the uh, study done by uh, ILO and MLC uh, for uh, 2013. I don't have the latest figure, but it's quite alarming. One in five ships diverted, 
and 20% of, let's say, $180 million could be saved if ships had some kind of a telemedicine solution. So why are vital signs very important? They generally tell you how well the crew is, how well uh, the person is. They also determine the treatment and protocol that has to be followed. It very accurately determines the physical condition of the body and how it is uh, reacting to various other uh, parameters in the body. And the, these five vital signs are uh, temperature, blood pressure, blood sugar, SpO2, and ECG. So we say that it's time for creating a crew health digital passport. We should look at a CFRR continuous wellness record, something like a lifetime record of one crew, one, one health record. So this is again, uh, you know, something that I want to talk about, the difference between telemedicine and telehealth. These are two different things. It's, it's there in the slide. But in short, all telehealth is telemedicine, but telemedicine is not telehealth. Telehealth is, uh, it goes beyond telemedicine in the sense it takes care of uh, education, advisories, uh, monitoring, and a lot of other things. So we say that it's not a solution if it's not affordable, accessible, or accountable. So we say, we, we came up with this concept called Uberization for uh, maritime healthcare. And when ships are going smart, why not health? All this will not happen if the connectivity in the sea is not uh, uh, progressing this fast. We have very high speed uh, internet. Very soon, almost all the ships would have uh, your home-like uh, internet on board with the Fleet Express and KU Band. And with digital ship, new technologies, new demands from the crew. So this is a kit that my company has made. Uh, it can be used for emergency. It can be used as a golden hour kit. And also, we are addressing a very growing concern in the maritime world, and that is uh, mental wellness. So eVitals is a telehealth kit. It's a combination of digital uh, medical diagnostic devices with a smart consult uh, software that the ships have, which, by which they can record all the vital signs and send it to anywhere they want. So this is the configuration of a box which we feel that every ship should have. It comes with uh, the vital signs monitors, as you can see on the screen. And the parameter it tests, these are the parameters that we test, of course, is the ECG, temperature, pulse oxygen, blood pressure, and other blood parameters like uh, glucose, hematocrit, hemoglobin, uric acid, total cholesterol. And apart from this, we have uh, included certain markers, instant markers, what we call as rapid tests, to immediately identify if a a person suffering with high fever for three, four days has dengue or malaria, or somebody who complains of a chest pain has, uh, is really going through a heart attack or not. So these, these uh, devices, you know, if used properly, monthly, we can actually do a NCD profiling, that is we can take care of non-communicable disease, and that is 85% of the average uh, in most developing countries uh, that death is caused due to. So this is the concept. The concept takes the kit, sends the data to a secure web server, and thereon served to any authorized user. As you can see, it works on all kinds of uh, communication systems. You just need very, very low bandwidth, even 2.4 kbps. M2M terminals are good enough for it to work. And once it goes to the secure cloud, it is accessible by TMAS organizations, it's accessible by the uh, company doctors or a personal physician. This is how the general app looks like for uh, use on board uh, the vessel. It has all the details, historical patient record, is current uh, 
conditions and as vital signs. And uh, what uh, is most important is very important for the doctor also to talk to the patient to see and ascertain the condition, what he is, before he can actually diagnose anything. So that we have a secure built-in web, con web consul sorry, video consultation access as well. This is what the doctor would see uh, anywhere in the world. He could be, he can watch this on his phone while playing golf in Hawaii or in his hospital, so this is a secure web service on which all the information collected on the ship is sent to, and then with the proper credentials, he is able to see this data. And this is the doctor's dashboard, so this is how the patient record will look like. So he has the record, he has the ECG graph, he can view the graph, he can uh, also do the analysis on the PQRS waves, and doctors can do a lot of things with this. Every ship we can do uh, analytics, like to see who is not doing good as far as health is concerned. And if you have a continuous monitoring, then you know that the trend on uh, whether he is uh, keeping up with his health uh, condition or whether he is uh, overeating and over drinking. Of course, all this have, have to be complying with uh, very high standards of uh, security. So Everything that is possibly around, we have made sure that we are complying with. So look at, let us look at a typical scenario that a vessel is sailing off Sir Charles Peak Summer, and the bosun is chipping, and he faints. Then there's a lot of commotion. So they, after taking him inside, he regains consciousness. He appears traumatized and he's uh, looking at, he says he's got chest pain. The shaken master calls the TMAS, reports the incident, and with a narrative description, because normally, oh, time's up. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> okay, thank you guys. <laughs>